Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Today we have the review of the new 1200, the SL1200GR. Two things to get out of the way before we begin. It is confirmed, it is official, the way you're supposed to pronounce the brand name is Techniques. However, I've been saying Techniques my whole life, it scans better for me, I'm not going to start changing now, so as far as I'm concerned, Techniques it remains. The second thing is that Technics didn't seem especially interested in having me review this turntable. The reasons for that might become clear as the review goes on, but that means I've had to get it from elsewhere. So I've got to give a massive thank you to all at West End DJ in London, here in the UK. They stock the new Technics range. They lent me their demo unit of the GR for a week. This review would not be happening without them. So thank you, West End DJ. Let's get to it. I think many DJs, especially those of a certain age, will have fond memories of opening up the boxes of a pair of brand new Technics 1200s. After parent company Panasonic announced the end of the range in 2010, I thought that would be something I would probably never experience again. Then 2016 rolled around and suddenly the 1200 was back. The Technics SL1200 GAE was a limited run, very high end turntable, which cost an eye watering $4,000. That was followed by the SL1200G model, also costing $4,000. So it was still looking unlikely that I would be having the pleasure of unboxing a 1200 again. Those were clearly aimed at audiophiles, DJs were never mentioned by the company, and they cost 4,000 bucks. But then at the start of 2017, the Technics SL1200GR was announced, and things were a little bit different. Panasonic started to mention DJs in their PR, and the price was a little more affordable. They don't seem to be readily available in the US yet, but here in the UK they're selling for around £1,300 sterling, which, at the time of making this video, is around $1,700. That's still a lot of money, without a doubt, but it doesn't seem especially unreasonable. One thing to remember is that by the time most DJs bought their older 1200s, they had almost become a commodity product. They were bought and sold on import-export markets like coffee, gold or bananas. There was so much competition that prices were made artificially low and retailers often only made pennies on the sale of a pair. And these new 1200s really have been completely re-engineered from the ground up. They might look familiar, but these are all new turntables and Technics have clearly put a lot of work into designing a 1200 for the new millennium. The build and materials are simply superb all round. They don't have the machine top plate of the more expensive models using a cast design instead, but it's super solid just like the 1200s of old. It looks great in the traditional silver livery of the 1200, and there is also a dark grey 1210 version available, which is the one I've always preferred personally. As widely liked as the handpin Super OEM turntables are, the build quality of the 1200GR is just on a different level all round. This is a very high quality product indeed. The GR retains the traditional rubber base of the older 1200s and rejection of vibration and feedback remains absolutely exemplary, whichever feet you have on there, more on that later. The weight of the GR is not that far off that of a Mark II, coming in slightly heavier and most of that I assume is down to the heavier platter. That platter is great, heavily lined with rubber which cuts down on resonance. Despite looking familiar on the outside, the internals are completely new, with a huge flat magnet designed to mate with the new motor design inside. The main upgrade to performance on the motor, according to Technics, is the reduction of cogging, a problem which has never really been on my radar. It's a 9-pole motor, as opposed to the 12-pole version on the older models, and whatever they've done with the tech, the performance remains top-notch. The wow and flutter specs are the same as 1200s of old, much lower than Super OEM turntables on paper, and in use, they stay locked solidly onto a pitch beautifully. Interestingly, the torque is rated slightly higher than older models, but the heavier platter means the startup time is the same, and when mixing or scratching, they handle just like a Mark II. If you're looking for the crazy high torque of tables like the Vestax PDX or Super OEMs, you're not going to find that here. These feel exactly like the classic 1200s in use. I got excited when I saw two access ports under the platter marked brake and torque. These change the startup and brake times, but you can't actually adjust the overall amount of torque. This is definitely a nice touch, although the range of adjustment seems fairly limited, and I suspect the vast majority of DJs will just leave both on maximum to retain that classic 1200 feel. The tone arm is nicely upgraded from the past generations with a beautiful construction quality of all the mounting parts and bearings. 
I'd be interested to see what audio files make of the upgrades from a sound quality perspective, but as a DJ, I'm very happy with the tone arm. It remains easy to balance and set up and tracked very well with all the different carts that I tried. Having RCA sockets instead of hardwired cables and a regular IEC power connector is a great upgrade. The Japan only Mark IV model had replaceable RCAs, but that was the only one to feature that before. They're neatly tucked away too, well under the body, although the angle of exit might make routing a bit tricky when positioned in battle style. You'll still need an earth wire as the GR isn't internally grounded. As with the later models from the previous generation, you have an LED target light and the power switch is recessed. Nothing revolutionary, but always good to see. The move from an analog to digital pitch control was a bit of a controversial move on the older M5G model, with some DJs absolutely hating it. From my perspective, it took a bit of getting used to, but I'm cool with it. You lose the really alive feel of the pitch on the older models, but it's extremely accurate and allows for the addition of plus or minus 16% pitch range, as well as the traditional eight. The GR has a very similar feel to its digital pitch and retains the 16% range option. Going back to back between a GR and a Mark II, you can certainly feel a difference, but as with the M5G, I have no beef with it at all. It's easy enough to adapt to, and I've always liked the pitch reset button, which means you avoid all the weirdness around zero found on the Mark II pitches. You also have the ability to switch to 78 RPM when pressing the 33 and 45 buttons together, which some hi-fi buffs will value, I'm sure. So far, so good. Overall, the GR is largely a nice, tasty upgrade to the M5G, but the redesigned feet is one area where I begin to have some issues. They are just a bit too wobbly for DJ use. Vertical movement is limited, but the amount of horizontal movement is, in my opinion, just too much for mixing, let alone scratching. I have a set of Isono feet which I take out sometimes to use with older models in dodgy DJ booths, but I use those with the understanding that my experience queuing up and cutting is going to be a bit compromised. It's just not ideal. And I'd say the side-to-side -side play on the stock GR feet is even more pronounced than with the Isonos. They do offer great isolation for sure, an improvement over the older models, but I found myself enjoying playing on the GR much more when I swapped out the feet for a set from a Mark II, and I think that's a real shame. Which brings me to the general problem I have with the GR. This is not a turntable designed for DJing. Whilst audio files can debate endlessly about the merits of the features on the GR, it's clear that Technics are very much focused on that market with all the new models of 1200. I love the feel of a classic 1200 as much as the next DJ, but in 2017, a lot of DJs who use turntables have become accustomed to having a few more things going on with their decks. I wasn't expecting MIDI controls or two start buttons, that kind of stuff, but higher torque, preferably adjustable, would be very welcome. Start up and brake adjustments on the player surface, ultra pitch, great isolation without compromising stability. I feel like if Technics had actually set out to create a turntable for DJing, the GR would look significantly different from how it does today, and it would certainly have different feet. The SL1200 remains a hi-fi turntable, which happens to be pretty great for DJing, and a rather expensive one at that. So there you go my take on the SL1200 GR. You know, Technics always had one big fundamental problem with the SL1200, and that problem was the SL1200. They produced over 30 years ago a turntable which was not only superb, but also lasts a lifetime. And if you're in the business of selling turntables, selling ones which never need to be replaced is not necessarily a wise move. And so I totally understand why, you know, as vinyl sales began to dwindle, they took the brand away, they just stopped. And I'm really glad that they've come back bringing new 1200s back to the world. That's a joy, you know, it's just really nice to open a brand new 1200 here in the lab. That was a real pleasure. But they've gone back to their hi-fi roots. That's, there's no doubt about it. This is not a DJ turntable. Like the original 1200 Mark II was not a DJ turntable. That was a hi-fi deck, which happened to be fantastic for DJing. This is kind of the same, except some of the improvements they've made for that kind of home hi-fi audiophile market actually slightly detract from its performance as a DJ turntable. The main thing being the feet. These feet are very good for isolation but they are not good for scratching. There's too much horizontal movement there. Even just mixing, I found skipping going on quite a lot. You know, really nicely balanced arms and everything else, just too much going on because there's too much horizontal movement there for 
DJ use. And so if you're gonna buy them for DJing, I would definitely swap out for a pair of the original Mark II feet. Then you've got a far more stable platform. And then it kind of just feels like an old 1200, which is both a good and a bad thing. You know, it, it feels much the same. The torque feels very similar. Everything about the feel of it, you know, the pitch is digital, but then the M5G pitch was digital and that's easy enough to adapt to. It's a slightly different feel from the old analog pitches, but really it's not difficult to get used to that at all. So I don't have a problem with that. The tone arm is really, really nice. The replaceable cables everywhere, that's a great touch. Overall, it's just a really nicely updated 1200 with slightly worse feet on it, which is fine, but they cost a lot of money. You know, for the price of one of these, you are still, even now in 2017, gonna be able to buy a pretty minty fresh pair of Mark IIs, Mark Vs, or M5Gs. You know, you're getting a pair of those used for the price of one of these brand new. So you're gonna to have to be a serious high roller to want to invest in these GRs. And if you are, that's fine. You know, put the other feet on, and for DJing, they will give you a ton of pleasure. Beautifully made, beautifully engineered product. It's just a bit of a hard sell when there's still plenty of really nice used older versions out there which will do the job just as well for half the money so yeah this is what i saw i, I foresaw this you know all the way through their you know launch of the gae and then moving on to this one they've kind of given lip service to djs but it's not a dj deck it's a hi-fi deck that's the market they're trying to sell to i think with a few tweaks they could produce a version of this for maybe a thousand bucks with much better feet on it and actually they'd sell like hotcakes absolutely they would but i don't think this gr is quite the one for djs at this point thanks again to west end dj for hooking me up with this one to try and to test really appreciate them making this review happen thank you for watching make sure you subscribe for all our future tips tricks and product reviews i'll see you soon